welcome. This is Lightning 3D Creations, Lightning Matt speaking. Today I want to cover the electronics enclosure that I designed and printed for my Tronxy X5SA Pro printer. This enclosure is designed to hold the SKR 1.4 turbo board, its TFT35 screen, and all the associated wiring and peripherals that come with it. All the parts and relevant items will be linked below in the comments. If you see anything that you have a question on, please feel free to comment and I will try to answer them as I have opportunity. The initial design for this was modeled from specification sheets and drawings found online as I was still waiting for my parts to arrive. Once I did receive the parts and I started doing the initial wiring and fit up, I did find some things that I needed to modify. For the larger parts, I pretty much just drilled new holes or made cuts as needed. I think I captured all the changes that I did in the STLs, but the main thing I do want to mention about that is if you do decide to print and use some or all of this design for your own printer, make sure you check your dimensions first, especially if you've modified something in the base of the unit that might block where some of these components go through. I have started a Rev 2 of the design for my other X5SA printer that I plan on doing the same SKR 1.4 turbo upgrade to. Once I have that design finished, printed, and fit up, I will post those models as well. Um, so stay tuned for that. Without further ado, let's get into the build. First off, a view from the right side of the machine. This is designed to have the SKR board near the front right side for ease of access to its USB port and the micro SD card slot. Two things to note on here. First, you'll notice that I do not have the front panel on the box at this time. The main reason for that is the ribbon cables for the TFT screen are not long enough to put the TFT where I want it. I'm waiting for new cables to arrive. Once I have those cables, I will mount that and cover up that opening. The other thing is the cover that goes on the board box. The slot for the micro SD is kind of tight. It's easier to get the card in and out without that cover on it. I will cut a hole in mine a little bit wider whenever I go to mount it, but that's one change that you might want to make if you decide to use this model. And the other thing to note is the buckboard box mounted on top of the main box. There's another one mounted on the back side of the unit. These were added as an afterthought due to me using a 24 volt power supply and 12 volt fans and forgetting to include a spot for them in the main box. Now to go through all the various parts and components with a short summary of each. To start off with, we have the TFT35 screen holder. So this design has the knob on the right. There's a similar design that has the knob underneath. Make sure you have the right screen coming if you plan on using this one. The design is three basic parts. There's the main frame for it that the card fits into, and then the cover to clamp it all in place with four little M3 bolts. The other little part there on the side is a USB alignment piece that's supposed to glue onto the side of the card to make the USB slide in easier. I did find that that wasn't really needed. The next component is the main board box. There's four parts to this to print. The main frame that everything bolts into. The cover, it provides the location for two fans to fit onto the cover. The front cover piece, which I designed as a separate item to make it easier to print and to allow for easier access if you needed to. This is designed just to fit into the location and be lightly glued or taped into place. Then there's a cable guide that we'll cover more later on when I'm showing the physical fit up of everything. Also included is an STL for the SKR 1.4 board, mainly for modeling purposes. After that we have the power supply support. This I did change at the last minute. Initially I designed everything to be mounted on the left side of the unit and as I started looking at where I wanted it I decided to put it on the right side. Instead of redesigning this I just flipped it 180 degrees. When I did that I had to make a small support board to fit underneath the power supply mount to keep it from sagging. The whole mount connects to the side of the main board box with four M3 screws and nuts. Also included are STLs for the power supply and power switch, again for modeling purposes. Um, these are measured off of the power supply and switch that came with my printer. 
I have seen some variants on these. The power supply, not so much, but the switch itself. Some printers have the rectangular style switch that I have. Some of them have a more square switch. Some of them have a kind of octagon shaped uh, assembly. So just look at yours before you print this up and make sure it looks like it's gonna be the right one to fit. For the most part, if you have the rectangular ones, they're about the similar size and they should match up. Then the next item is the stand. This is basically just a large flat platform used to support everything else. It bolts to the side of the machine using four M4 T-nuts, three through the side of the stand and one in the tab to line everything up. The notch that is pre-cut out in the front of the stand was used to align to my Z motor. If your Z motor is in a different location or if you want to move the stand around some, you would need to adjust for that notch either by designing it in advance or cutting it out after. The next components are what I call channels. Um, anybody who's done any wiring knows what channels or conduit are. Basically these are physical components used to help guide wiring around and protect wiring at the same time. There's a number of components for this. The uh, main boxes that everything connects into identified on here is boxes one, two, three. Um, these are what I will show later on where the main covers for access to wiring is and mainly to give a physical support. These are the components that will bolt to the frame of the unit. All the remaining components, um, the items seven, you'll see one, two, three, four of those, and then item six, those are basically just the wiring conduit channels that go to the various components. Most of these have a slot included in them to make it easier to help run wiring through there, especially in uh, the parts where you get a lot of wires. Item 6 was designed to be printed as two parts because it is angled and if you tried to print something like that um, your printer would not have a happy time trying to put supports inside there and you digging them out later on. So it was designed to be printed with a main piece and then a cover piece that snapped in and glued in place. And then the items 4 and 5 shown there are little end caps to help hold things down. Item 4 bolts to the side of the main board box and item 5 bolts to the stand. Now the channel boxes, the first one is the small box on the far left of the machine. This one acts as an anchor point for the long channel that goes across the back side of the machine. It bolts to the 2020 frame using an M4 T-nut. It allows for a location for the y, wire, y motor wiring to be routed through and then go up the back side of the 2020 channel to the motor. It has a simple little cover that tabs in at the bottom and uses an M3 bolt to hold it in place. The next channel box is the most complicated of them. This one acts as an anchor point for almost all the other channels. It has a spot to put the long channel that goes across the back side of the unit on it. It has a spot for the channel that runs up to the main board box. It has a small channel that goes down to the next box we'll talk about. It has two covers. One cover opens up on the side there to allow access for all the wiring to help route everything easier. And then it has the L-shaped cover that allows access to the bottom ribbon cable connector, which we'll show more when we get into the actual assembly. There are three main anchors for this that go into the 2040 riser connector on the back side of the unit. One bolts directly into the back side of the 2040, and then there's the small tab and long tab that bolts into the side of the 2040. And then the next box is the small one here that's directly below the previous box. It acts as a point to allow the wiring for the heated board to come through and the thermistor. I also routed the wiring for the hot end heater and its thermistor down through this and then they run through the angled channel down to the bottom of the main board box to allow those wires to run separately from all the signal wires. And the last box is the largest of them. This one mounts at the top back of the machine. It acts as an anchor point for the top of the ribbon cable and a location to spool up any excess wiring that you might have coming off of the cable chain guide. Next item in here is actually just STLs for the ribbon cable and the cable connection boards. These are called breakout boards commonly. They are included in some of the older X5 SAs on both the top and bottom. The newer ones, from what I understand, is the bottom of the ribbon cable connects directly up to the main board, the Tronxy board. 
so you might only have one breakout board on the top of yours. If you do have both boards, then you can still utilize this ribbon cable, or if you purchase a separate bottom breakout board, you can still use this ribbon cable to run it the back side of the machine. Um, or you can just take the ribbon cable out altogether and just run direct wires to the top of the machine, which I might do on the de next design. But I included the STLs in here to show how I modeled everything, and then if you're using your own boards, you can use this in your modeling. And then the last item on here for the individual parts is the, the buck board boxes. Like I said, these are two simple little boxes. Um, they're exactly the same in the design, except for one is designed to be mounted up and down, and it does not have the cooling slots in the side. The other one was mounted um, horizontally and has the cooling slots. So I included both of them in there. Feel free to use them if you want. Like I said, these were measured and specced off of the type of boards I had, and even then I made it a little bit too narrow. So want to check whichever buckboards you get if you do use those and make sure they'll fit in this box. Alright, now just a brief walkthrough of the wiring for everything. Coming off of the cable chain, the wires lead down into that top box I talked about. Here's the post that everything wraps around. I use rubber bands to help hold those in place. All those connectors come over here to this breakout board that connects to the ribbon cable. I like using the breakout board because it gives you a common spot to plug in things and so you don't have a single wire going all the way down to the main board if you're troubleshooting. From the ribbon cable it goes down into the bottom box. Also right here I have the wires for the BL touch. Those I have quick disconnects located on the side of the ribbon cable and they're just velcroed in place to keep them there. Next, the bottom connection box where the ribbon cable plugs into. First off, you have the Y motor cable. I included a quick disconnect right here so that, again, you don't have a single cable running the full length. That runs through this channel over to the connection box. Like I said, this small box just has the cable for the Y motor. It runs up and goes into the base of the Y motor. It has a simple little cover that goes in with a, just a little uh, M3 nut to I'm sorry, M3 bolt to hold that in place. And then back over to the channel box. Like I said, you had the cable for the ribbon and for the BL touch that comes up through the slot in this cover. So first you need to put the ribbon cable through it, and then you need to connect up the BL touch wires. So you take the wires one at a time, run them up through that slot also, a little fumbling around, connect them up to their plugs, make sure you get the color coding right on this, black to black, white to white, and then the three wire cable, and these extension cables I made using just a uh, crimping kit that I got that came with the DuPont style connectors and the JST style connectors. It makes it real easy to make all your own cables instead of having to deal with what they give you. So connected up the other one, and then like I said, you fit that into the slot here on the cover. Then you fit the ribbon cable into its slot. Make sure you line up the pins, push it down, lock it in place fold all the cables in neatly so they're not getting pinched and then connect up everything. Next I want to show you this, this little box at the bottom. I printed out a bunch of these. Basically they're just little boxes to use to put any excess cable in, again to get stuff out of the way. Since I made this channel on the left too small to hold the excess cable for the heater wire, I just threw this in as a place to hide it. It's not really needed but it's something useful for. And then like I said, the heat bed heater wires go into that channel connection box. Also going through there is the heater cable for the hot end and then the thermistor wires for both. So the hot end wires come down through that small riser into this box and then they go forward. And that just has a simple little cover that tabs, tabs into place and screws in with a couple of M3, nut, or M3 bolts. 
Now this top cover here, like I said, makes it easier for you running the wires to the main board. It also gave me an area to break out the two buck boards for the fans on the hot end, the part fan and the um, cooling fan. And it has a simple little cover that fits into the slot and bolts into place with a couple of M3 bolts. Now that cover, I should say, I had to cut the notch out to allow those wires to go up through since they were an afterthought. It wasn't originally designed. If you don't use the buckboards or if they're located in your main box, you won't need that cutout. Now going in here, I'm just showing where the wires come through. I got the BL touch wires right there on uh, quick disconnects that I made to change it from the BL touch style to the JST style. Then you have the various end stop wires, you have the fan wires, you have the all the various motor wires all coming through that same channel. And then the fans for the cover, I put longer extensions on them, go into a couple of quick disconnects, and I just use some of the blue tape to keep those from popping off in case I have to take the board off like I did here. And like I said, that just goes through a simple little hole through the bottom of the or bottom of the box into that buckboard box. And then install this cover, put it on right side up. And that's the main assembly. And then the last thing I wanted to show in regards to this build is how I put in the main box wiring. So initially I wire up the power supply and run all those wires all the peripheral wires through the various channels all to the main box and then pull all those wires out of the way and hold them out of the way using velcro or tape or rubber bands or whatever then I wire up the power supply wire and the heater wires to the SKR board next you loosely put the SKR board in place using the two left hand bolts those are not tightened down yet then you put in the gray cable guide piece which it fits underneath the SKR board using the two SKR board bolts on the right side to go through this piece of plastic and then into the main board box to bolt it all down. Now the purpose of this guide is to basically hold the power supply wires and the heater wires back against the back side of the box while allowing all the other wires to be on the front side, just separating out power supply wires versus signal wires. After all that is mounted in place, you tighten those bolts down, it pulls it all nice snugly to the back side of the unit, and then you can put in all the other wires. And then as I said early on in this, all this is Rev 1 build for the first printer that I upgraded. For my other printer, I've already started on Rev 2, using lessons learned from this previous design, and changing the modification around. Here you can see just a still shot of the blender file for it. I'm actually printing the main board box right now while I'm still working on the back side of the design. Um, I hope to simplify some things down and just make it a little bit neater overall. I will post this later on and like I said uh, look down in the comments below for the links to where the STL files for all this is located and a list of the parts that I used in this as well as uh, I will update it at a later date with a link to this Rev2 design once it is done. And that's everything. This was Lightning Matt from Lightning 3D Creations. Have a great day.